I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And I'm going for a drive. I know you're going to have fun. Twenty twenty three Maserati Gricale Trofeo with launch control. God. I did not expect that. Horsepower and torque. Five hundred twenty three horsepower, four hundred fifty seven pound feet of torque from a three liter twin turbo V six derived from the MC twenty. Okay. Corsa mode, just gonna floor it. Automatic. God, you get that grrr. This is mind numbingly fast. Where's Jacob? I'm on the trail end of being sick, so I don't feel like getting him sick, so I'm doing a solo review. He's doing another solo review. This is a limited trim. We'll be back together next week. What is this? This is the new Maserati SUV. That is the Gricale, which goes below the Levante. This one is the Trofeo, so it's the top trim. There's also a GT and a Modena, which are four cylinder mild hybrids. This is the twin turbo V6, so it's like obviously the sickest one. And then this competes kind of with like an X4M and a Macan Turbo, or would it be a Macan GTS since the turbo is now the GTS? Anyways, you know me, I love Maseratis. Let's start with the looks. Oh, and I'm trying out some new thumbnail ideas. You know, I'm never gonna fully bail on the original ones that we came up with, but uh, let me know if you like them in the comments below. Looks like all the current Maserati's kind of like the MC20 front end. I think everything's starting to look like that. Even the new Gran Turismo kind of looks more like that. The headlights look all right. Uh, I do think they look like some Ford SUV that people have been showing on the internet. You know, kind of true, but we got that Maserati grill. Got a bunch of cool carbon fiber at the bottom because this is the Trofeo. This one's in blue. I would prefer the yellow launch one, but I mean, this is still pretty cool, subtle. We got the three things on the fender. We've got Trofeo with a red outline. Then we got a red outline on the Trident on the C pillar. And then body lines, nice and smooth carbon fiber at the bottom. We've got cool 21 inch wheels. They look kind of Tridenty in their pattern. Yellow brake calipers, drilled rotors, and what would be the Continental recommended tire? The Extreme Contact DWS 06 Plus. I think it's a pretty sweet wheel, but I still think, you know, comparing it to other Italian companies, I like the Alfa Romeo Stelvio wheels more for that. But I don't know if those would suit this. Anyways, moving on to the back end, the taillights are kind of supposed to be upside down boomerang things, kind of like the 3200 GT taillights, which I see it, I totally get it. Below that, we got really cool exhaust tips. Let's listen to it from the outside. You can like properly rev it out in Corsa. It sounds great, especially when you're on it. Let me give it a little. My goodness, by the way, that grrr, we got a ZF eight speed in here and it's perfect, 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 perfect. It was perfect, perfect, everything down to the last minute details. Back to the looks, cool carbon fiber diffuser at the bottom, Maserati across, we got the name Grecale there on the badge. What does Grecale mean? It's the name of a wind, a wind that goes through the Mediterranean and the Ghibli is also the name of a wind. I didn't know that about Maserati names. I think that's pretty cool. Like those winds mean nothing to me, but I guess it makes sense for like Europe stuff. Anyways, overall looks, I think it looks great. It makes perfect sense for a Maserati SUV. Do I think it looks better than the Stelvio Quad? Maybe a little bit. Better than the X4, 100%. Better than the new Macan, 100%. My favorite, yes. Do I like Italian cars a lot more than maybe I should? Yes, but you saw that launch, like I have a reason. And then back to the looks, you can also raise and dump this thing. It's got air ride suspension because we're in the Trofeo. You've got three inches of going up and down which is pretty cool, like, that's pretty good. And because it's the Trofeo, not the GT or the Modena, you don't get chrome at the front, it's all blacked out, which, you know, that's, that's the sporty look, I totally get it. So before I dabble with the interior, I'm just gonna slow down, put it into manual mode. OK, 
Okay, driving it, shifting it, it sounds perfect, it feels perfect. This is perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. We've got the paddles mounted to the column, not the steering wheel, because Italian stuff, it's great. Shift light in the head-up display when you're in Corsa mode, it's so great. It shows it in your gauge cluster as well. The gauge clusters change up between modes too, so it's it just everything about this matches perfectly. Let's show the inside quickly. We've got a new infotainment. It's all digital. It's based off Android Automotive, so it goes down and like out like this. I think it looks fantastic. And here, let me actually put into comfort mode, GT mode, so it's nice and quiet. Or should I go through Cliche Corner first? Let's do Cliche Corner first. Back to Corsa. Oh, okay, will it? Yes, the back end wants to kick out. Holy crap, you have so much power and it's so, so fast, but like loosey-goosey fast. <laughs> oh, dude, dude, dude. Okay, this feels uh, a lot like the um, Levante Trofeo where it just wants to get the back end out more. This is just, man, this is perfect handling, like Hoonigan Italian SUV, Hooligan Italian SUV, are we allowed to say Hoonigan? It's just, it's exactly what I want out of a fun little SUV. And I bet you it's super fast on a racetrack. Uh, I obviously am not driving to be on a racetrack and it's winter, so we got winters on right now. But it felt great, but less on the easy fast and more on the hold on to your horses fast, where you're constantly overcorrecting, which is, you know, kind of what you want. You don't get that out of SUVs. This is, man. And now let's talk about this infotainment. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, that's good. We got Sirius XM, it'll rewind. We've got our screen up at the top, everything's touched, but we have menus that stay shown on the left side so we can get to a lot of our shortcuts. We can also slide from the top to get to shortcuts and then add those to the very top left, which is where I added my 360 camera, which is nice, except there's no option to specifically show like the, the tire along the curb so you don't scratch anything while trying to park. But besides that, really good. Everything is pretty smooth. We even have performance pages like a friggin' Dodge Charger so we can check out our drag times and stuff. And you know, this is Stellantis based. So like we, it makes sense that it kind of has all that stuff. The sound system, Sonus Faber. I think that's how you pronounce it. Really, really good. And then also other things like the turn signal sounds cool. Listen to this. It's a, a very solid, fancy sounding sound. And then with that, there's a couple of sounds that I don't like. Anytime you try to open the door or close the door or get in or out, I feel like the car honks at you a whole bunch more than it should. But speaking of those door handles, sorry, I keep forgetting about the infotainment. I don't have Jacob to keep me on track. To unlock, the handle doesn't like lift up. It's kind of like a little button under there. And then to lock it, you just click on the middle bottom part and it locks. So that's kind of cool. Not my style, but like whatever. But what's cool is when you pop the trunk, you've got a lock and close trunk button which is my style. All right, I'm in comfort, chilling super hard. I'm gonna floor it to see if we can just giddy up whenever we want. Whoa, much, much more muted than I would have expected. Now let's try that same thing in GT. We're cruising, we're chilling. Floor it. Yeah, okay, in GT, the normal startup mode, if you just floor it out of nowhere, it'll still go back. I've heard no pumped in audio in here, which is fantastic, and I can hear the grr, grr, every time, perfect. Inside, there is nothing to not like about this. What was I talking about before I got trailed off? I think infotainment. Below the infotainment, we have a separate screen for climate control. Is it my favorite? No, but is it easy to use? Actually, yes. You got heated seats, ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, which is super nice. You have your ESC off at the bottom right, and then at the left, you can control your headlights, which is kind of weird, but like whatever. Then you can control your clock from there, which is right here. And it's a digital clock and you can put like your brake uh, and your gas pedal stuff, your compass, your G meter. I just keep it on the clock. I think it looks really nice. And then here's my, here's my thing with Italian infotainments. I didn't mind it in the Ferrari. I don't mind it in this. I didn't mind it in the Alphas. I think Italian cars are allowed to have weird infotainments just because whatever. That's the thing about Italian cars. It's so exotic in Canada, North America, that they're allowed as long as it works. And this, to me, it's not even that weird. Works so much better than the new BMW stuff. And then compared to the EQS stuff, I feel like this works better too, because it's just still normalized. 
It's just no hard buttons, no volume knob, no uh, tuning. So it's got a little like touch buttons here, but it has the best feature ever that my Plymouth Prowler and my Fiat 500 Abarth, yes, I love Italian cars, has the buttons behind the steering wheel to control the radio stations. So that's fantastic. Oh, I should probably get back to comfort or Jacob's gonna get mad at me. This car's very comfortable. I'm in GT mode, it's chill, it's chill. With my drive mode selector, I also have off-road comfort GT Sport and Corsa. So in comfort, with the air suspension, that was very nice. And then if I go to Sport or Corsa, it's a lot bouncier. But even then, if I go click the middle button in my drive mode, there's a suspension thing. I can go from hard to soft, which is good. It is a very, very compliant car overall. Good amount of sportiness and comfort, not too hard according to my standards of uh, bouncy suspension in cars. And it doesn't feel like it's over damped or anything. It just feels perfect. I'm very, very happy with it. Jacob might have had something different to say if he was driving, but fortunately he does not have the chance to, and he's missing out on all the goodness of this. Before I talk about all the nice interior materials, because they are super nice, we have a full digital gauge cluster and a head-up display. The head-up display is great. She's got shift lights in Corsa mode, which is perfect. The gauge cluster is great too. You can control what shows up in the left bubble by pressing this left button, bubble button on the steering wheel. And then we can also go up and down and through the settings. We've got navigation that can show on the inside, which you can pay to have a Hi-Fi hotspot in here that can control that and give you live traffic updates. And with all that connected stuff, you can have like Amazon Alexa in your car too, which is cool, not my style, whatever. And then this also does have, hey Mercedes, no, hey Maserati. Turn temperature to 21 degrees. I've set the temperature to 21 degrees. And it makes the little clock bubble, like the, the Siri voice command thing, which is pretty cool. This infotainment is actually called Maserati Intelligent Infotainment. No, something like that, M-I-A. And then the gauge cluster modes, as you go through your drive mode, they change. With Sport, you'll actually get like the full tack on the left. And then with Corsa, you get in the center and then you can change if you get your turbo torque oil pressure or you can get like your brake pressure and everything on the right. You can change that in the infotainment. If you dig through it, there is a lot to go through and a lot you can find. So it is a good experience, I think, if you buy this car to really dig through in your apps because you can control so much. You can control, obviously, your lane departure assist, how it vibrates and stuff. You can turn that on or off on the very left of the turn stock. But then this also does have really good Maserati radar cruise lane keep that you only need to have your fingers touching the wheel for it to know your hands on the wheel. It senses it like that. We spoke about this years ago with the old Maseratis and I love it just as much with this Maserati. Like such a good radar cruise lane keep system. Probably my favorite. Just because some of them you put your hands on and it's like, it's still like, put your hands on, and then you gotta shake it all the time. But this has like a sensor that knows. It's excellent, excellent. Then our start stop button on the steering wheel, pretty cool, but it doesn't light up all the time. So if like you haven't been driving for like sitting in your car and haven't started it, it's black. Took me a while because I was looking for like the, this power button. Maybe I'm like, no, is there a, a button there? No, is there a button here? No, but that's fine. Uh, moving on to the interior and materials. We got yellow stitching. I think you can also get red stitching for the Trofeo. We got it on the headrest too and everywhere. It looks very nice. We've got this exposed carbon fiber, which I love. I think this looks fantastic. I do not like glossy carbon fiber. We can uh, pop this open here and that's where our CarPlay cable goes and there's a nice little pass-through. Behind that, we have cup holders that will not fit a small cup. It just sinks down to the bottom. It's, yeah, that's a fail. But like, it's an Italian car. I am surprised that it actually has a cup holder to begin with, so that's fine. Let's do a quick visor test. Three, two, one, full pass. Oh my God, this thing keeps impressing. We got a very cool uh, moonroof. Let's see, slide it back farther. Oh, look at all that light. And then apparently this has the most leg room. And sitting behind myself, I have so much leg room. I'm sure Jacob could fit I am sure that this does have some of the best leg room in the class, especially compared to like a Macan. And then even with that, the trunk room is amazing. So that is good too. On the inside, I think Jacob would have had a great time driving around in this. Uh, we don't have door handles to exit 
the car, we've got this little button to press to get out, which I think is cool. I think people who buy these kind of cars want little features like that, so I'm happy with that too. And I like the grills for the vents on the inside. I think it looks very premium, matches the clock really well. No uh, piano black in here, which is a little bit on the doors where you got your window switches and stuff. And then, uh, yeah, I guess a little on the steering wheel. We have a nice black Maserati logo on the steering wheel, which I like. I don't mind this amount of piano black at all, and especially at this price because this is pretty expensive. I think it's totally reasonable. But this one does not have winter floor mats inside. I did mess up the floor mats a little bit with my dirty feet, but I haven't messed up the floors in my Mazda CX-5 because I've had my amazing tux mat in there. And if you want to set a tux mat for your personal car, hit up tuxmat.com slash the straight pipes. You don't want to muddy up your floors for your personal car. So overall thoughts on this, before I get to the price, do I like the way this SUV drives more than every other SUV in this class? Yes. It's, it's more rear wheel drive, more kicks out. Obviously it's an all wheel drive system. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but it is. We got LSDs back there and stuff too. Uh, this drives better to me. The power is better to me. Like here, let me go to Corsa and give it a little. Like it just in automatic, just grabbed me and pulled me so hard and just That's what I want. That's all I want in a fast SUV and it's just a different sound than the same old BMW or Mercedes. Feels a little more crazy than an Audi. This is my style, and then definitely way crazier than a Porsche, which would, wouldn't sound good, but it would probably handle. Yeah, I'd probably be faster in a Porsche. Looks-wise, I think this looks way cooler. I actually had a neighbor come on my driveway and like walk behind the car to take a look at what model it was, and nobody's ever done that with a car that has to look, so there's that. It definitely doesn't get attention from random people, but like, People who like cars are way more stoked to see Maserati, so I like it that way. And then interior-wise, controlling this infotainment, it may be mostly touch, but I feel like it's mostly touch in a good way. And if they can stick with this for the next six years while everyone else does crazy stuff, I think Maserati might come out a little bit more on top because like, there's a lot of those infotainments that I really don't like, and this is very easy to grasp. So now, with all that out of the way, I think it's time to get to the price. The Gricali starts at the GT level at $75,200 Canadian. And this Trofeo optioned up is $145,500 Canadian. Is that a lot of money? Yes. Are Porsches expensive? Yes. Are BMWs getting expensive? Yes. Mercedes, Audis too. I get this. I like this. If I had the money to spend like that, I would pick this one because it just makes me the happiest. You get the most emotion out of it, the coolest sound, a lot of room. It's different. And I just, I like using the infotainment too. It's not even that it's different in one good way and then everything else is bad. I legitimately feel that everything is better in this than all the competition. I like this more. Everything about the way I drive and like cars is better in this and I just think it's great. Just an awesome Maserati. So if you're looking to get one for yourself, hit up tsp.truecar.com. Jacob's gonna be back next week with me and I'm gonna end off this video with a launch control. I hope you guys uh, like this. Click this video right here. I set it to be best for viewer. Leave a comment below. Which video did YouTube decide was the best for you, the viewer? <laughs>